Today we're going to continue our punching series. We've done the jab, we've done the cross. Today we're adding to that the third punch, which is the hook. Now the hook works like this. It uh, comes around in this direction, but unlike what the average person thinks, the hook doesn't come in a big, wide-ranging move like this. It can, often does in fights, but the way it's technically taught is this. Your hands are going to be this way. So if you see my fighting stance, my angle of my feet and my upper body are angled the same way. I've got my hands right out in front of my shoulders like this. So if I threw the jab like this and I threw the cross this way, then my right foot pivoted on that cross. Now my left foot is going to pivot back as I throw my hook just like that foot pivoted. So the formula is uh, force equals mass times acceleration. So in this strike on the hook, I'm trying to get the mass of my body rotating at the same time that the punch fires. And the way we say it to our black belts is until they take their final breath, every time they throw a punch from either side, with the exception of a jab, their foot is going to pivot like this. So if they're throwing a jab or a, cr or a hook, I'm sorry, a cross, a hook, or uppercuts, their bodies are always going to rotate in the direction that that punch is going. So the hook is going to work like this. I've just thrown a cross. My left hand is here. It's in front of my shoulder, level with my chin high. And this is technically what happens in slow motion. My shoulder starts to move like this, just, just slightly ahead of the hand moving. And that creates a space between my shoulder and my hand. And at the same time all that happens, my elbow starts to come up like this. And my hand now covers that space that I just created between the hand and the shoulder and comes across like this. So this is not the hook. My hand's not going over there in order to come in here, just like my right cross wouldn't come back like this in order to go that way. So my shoulder begins, my hand comes and passes through that space. Now question that's often asked is, do you land the hook with your hand like this, or do you land the hook with your hand like that? And the answer is yes, you can land it both ways. Now remember, a boxer has a glove on his hand, his hands are wrapped, and so if he lands like this, these knuckles are going to be more protected than they are in real life. When you're hitting the heavy bag, your wrist is going to feel stronger in this vertical position than it is like this, and if you're hitting someone with bare knuckles, you'd more likely want to land with it like this than you would this way. Remember one of the most common injuries is this boxer's fracture where these knuckles collide with your opponent's hard face, bone muscles, bones I should say in his face or his skull, and you break those knuckles right there. So again, I'm going to do this. My weight's going to stay here, and my foot is going to pivot like that. So from the side, it would look like my body stayed straight up and I just pivoted from here to here. So you are going to add head movement to this as you get better with it. You'll be able to throw a cross and then as you throw a hook, have your head move in a different direction. But for the basics, just think about how your body turns around this axis right down through the center of your body. So a lot of times when we're teaching people, we'll have them just do this with their feet to get used to having this foot pivots with the cross, this foot pivots back with the hook. So it really looks like I'm in a forward fighting stance here, and then when I pivot this way, it looks like I'm in a forward fighting stance over there. Then when I come back with the uppercut, like I said, our body's going to pivot back this direction each time we throw an uppercut. So that's the hook. Next time, we'll go into the uppercuts.